Praise the Lord. I'm always wondering if I just have a big mouth or whether you guys can actually hear me out there. I'm going to open the service this morning reading from Psalms 11. Psalm. I tend to always want to put an S on that. Psalm 11. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, free as a bird to your mountain. Flee as a bird to your mountain. For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of, of men. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked, and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Upon the wicked shall he rain, rain snares, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous, Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. I hope you want to be up among the upright this morning. I think that's why we're all here, because we want to be uh, in a good place with God. Why don't you stand with me this morning as we welcome him into this place and give our attention to him. Jesus, we worship you this morning, Lord, and we thank you for this opportunity to be in your, in your midst, in the midst of your people this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we thank you for it. We thank you for this day, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Got to bear with me up here. I'm having one of my technical difficulties. You do know I have that sometimes. Shh. As soon as my screen decides to do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> Somebody want to make a speech, give a testimony or something? No pressure up here. Oh yeah, play the organ, Regina. <laughs> my screen is locked. <laughs> okay, anybody got a joke? Something. Steven, come. No, come rescue me. No, my. I knew this was bound to happen one day with all this technology. I got it here. Just. Ah, ah. I got it. I got it. You know, it, it's like at, it's like at work when you're having a problem with your computer. Mmm. <laughs> At work, when I'm having a problem with my computer, I'm trying to figure it out, figure it out, figure it out, and I can't get it. And as soon as I get the IT person on the phone, you know, I figure out what it is and go, oh, sorry, false alarm. Right? That's how that just went. Anyway, why don't we do what we came to do, and let's praise the Lord this morning. Worship members be saying, I feel like praising him, and when I think of the goodness of Jesus.
worthy, Lord. We praise you simply because of who you are, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm telling you, when you just start thinking about what God has done and how good he's mm, we can go on and on we can have a praise session that lasts from now to eternity when you think about the goodness of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah Jesus worship members be saying what a gathering that will be <clears throat> Jesus, what a gathering that will be. You know, we have a good time here, just gathering together. And we have little celebrations like we had yesterday for Tina, and you know, family came, and I, I still have friends from elementary school. I think that's really cool. I had one, yeah, I had one friend from fourth grade. 
she was a problem kid. And she came she came to our school in DC and I think she fought everybody in the first week, right? <laughs> she had issues. Those are the people that gravitate towards me for some reason. <laughs> I'm always getting along with the with the oddballs, and uh, anyway, she actually made the trek up, which was really great because I hadn't seen her in a long time. But it's it, it's good to gather together with people, and I mean, you know, it's just this is awesome. And man, what is heaven going to hold? That's going to be awesome, really going to be awesome. And uh, some some folks showed up uh, that I didn't even know were coming. Good thing there was enough food, right? <laughs> I'm like, excuse me, who are you? But anyway, <laughs> but that's what heaven's going to be like. There's going to be some folks in heaven that you're not going to, you're not going to expect them to be there. But uh, you're not going to throw them out. You're not going to be mad. How'd you make it? Right? You know? <laughs> We're all going to be glad over there. Right? We're not going to have any issues with folks showing up, uh, whether we knew about it or not. It's going to be an awesome time. The worship members be saying, "Have thine own way, Lord."
you, Jesus. That is our prayer this morning, Jesus. Have thine own way, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus, and we trust you, Lord. Surely there's nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I think that that song puts us in the right frame of mind for prayer. Yeah. Have thine own way, Lord. I think some of us have lived long enough. I say this all the time that we, we, we realize we do not have it all figured out. And we ask for things that backfire. You ever prayed about something and got it? And we're rut row. <laughs> Why did I ask for that? <laughs> Trying to be a problem. You know, we can just say, God, have your own way. But we'd be much better off. Why don't we um, go out of order here and go to the Lord in prayer? I think I saw somewhere on Facebook that Sister Teresa was in the hospital. I'm not sure whether she's home or not. But let's remember her in prayer. Um, Sister Jackie's grandson, Malachi, that he continues to recover. Um, Kitty and Fred, yes, that God will intervene in their lives and help them out. Uh, how about any special unspoken tonight? Those, actually, this morning. In fact, they're going to be all unspoken because I can't take all your prayer requests this morning. But if you have a prayer request, just raise your hand. God is paying attention. Look around this room and agree with somebody. And let's take our needs to him this morning. Jesus. God, we ask that you would have your own way in our lives, Lord Jesus, and that you would minister, Lord, like only you can, Jesus, that you would touch Kitty and Fred, oh God, and intervene in their lives, Lord Jesus, and touch Sister Teresa, God, and minister your healing into her body, Lord. And God, minister to all the needs lifted before you, Father. You know, Jesus. You know what we really need, God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way in this service today, Father. Open our hearts and our minds to your word, Lord. Cause us to be better off than when we leave this place is when we came in, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. How many of you know the presence of the Lord is in this place? Absolutely. He says, where two or three are gathered in his name, there he would be in the midst. And we, we really outnumber two or three. God is here. We worship members be saying, um, in the presence of Jehovah, and we are standing on holy ground.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we thank you for your presence, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Secretly, I'm Moko Yoshe. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hika Yamoko Yoshe. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Seiko yomoko yoshe. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you get out of your seats and make sure you greet our visitors and greet one another. We'll get back together in a moment. <clears throat> couple more people and then find your seat.
Well, that didn't work so well. Let's try it again. <laughs> to all of our guests and our visitors, if you don't already know it, we are very happy that you are here. We are glad to be here ourselves. And we are just honored that you have chosen to be with us. If this is your first time with us, we welcome you heartily. And if you have been here before and are trying to figure out why you keep coming back, <laughs> while you're trying to figure it out, we're just going to enjoy having you come. And we are so happy that you are here and that you are worshiping with us, spending time with us in the presence of the Lord. I'm here to take care of just a few announcements and uh, first of all, if you have not picked up, we put out a, a two-month calendar. If you've not picked up the June-July calendar, they are available. Bright yellow out there in between the doors as you exit the sanctuary on the other side of the wall. And uh, there and also under the community uh, board, which is to my right, your left, you will find bookmarks as promised to help you with your part. In the end of February at our business meeting, I presented to the congregation um, six areas that I asked you to consider um, committing yourself to over the course of this year. They're in six different areas. One is prayer. Begin and end each day with prayer. Sounds like a good thing, right? I'm not talking about you got to spend five hours on each end. No, just begin and end each day with prayer. And the second is I asked you to participate in our Sunday evening prayer at 5 p.m. Before our 6 p.m. service tonight, we have prayer every Sunday evening at 5 p.m. In the giving area, I ask you to make a monthly commitment to world missions. I didn't ask you to give anything to us, but I asked you rather to make a commitment to world missions. That is the money that we send throughout the world, mostly to those plaques, but other areas as well that support the church around the world. The second area is, is if you already are committed to world missions, that you will consider increasing your monthly commitment to world missions. All right? So that was the area of giving. In fellowship, we ask you to begin attending fellowship meetings and potlucks. And uh, we've got one of those, in fact, coming up this Friday night. Men, we have a men's fellowship meeting Friday night at 7.30. And so you've got an opportunity to check that one off for this month. And, uh, and then also asked you to bring guests to the fellowship meeting. So be thinking about someone you could invite to bring along with you. And uh, we enjoy our fellowship meetings together and our potlucks as well. And I believe we've got a potluck coming up in June. I knew it was on one of these in June as well. So both of those are available to you. And then discipleship asked you to participate in our discipleship classes. And I know a number of you are. And in that vein, uh, remember that this Monday begins Ministry Monday. And then in the fall, we will roll out. We've got two more weeks of discipleship classes in the spring term. And then we have a summer break. And in the fall, we will begin our discipleship classes, levels 1, 2, and 3. Levels 1 and 2 will be held on Wednesday evening. And level 3 will be held on Tuesday. I will probably roll out a couple of, of sessions of that, one in the evening and one during the day. Since I, we are back around, there's a number of you that would like to do, do it during the day. So I will do that for you. And uh, so participate in our discipleship areas. In evangelism, I've asked you to pray for weekly opportunity to share your witness. So many of us feel like we have to know the Bible in order to bear witness. You do not. You simply need to tell people what you know. What has Jesus done for you? Small, big, or large in your assessment, share the story. Share your witness. Pray for that opportunity. And then second is I've asked you, and a number of you have, and I'm reminding you again, be 30 minutes early to church so that when our guests come, there are folks here that can greet them with a warm smile, handshake, get to know them, know their name, etc. So that's in evangelism. And then finally in the area of family, I've asked you to have a daily family altar. A time where you sit down and perhaps read from the Word of God and pray together. 
It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be drawn out. It doesn't even have to be hoity-toity. In fact, my in-laws are sure that our family is going straight to hell based on our family altars. They're very irreverent. But I just can't seem to figure out how to make my kids act different with God than the way they act with me. So I kind of figure God knows how to handle the way they act with me, so I'll let them act that way with God. And it's starting to get somewhat better, but we still got a ways to go. Any of you that have ever joined in a Beardsley family altar, you already know what I'm talking about. But have a family altar. Have it each day. Have time set aside. And finally, I've asked you to set aside time each week to spend together as a family. Spend time together as a family, not just in that family altar, but sustain time. You won't know your children, you won't know your spouse if you don't spend time with them. So anyway, to help you remember that, we've got these nice looking bookmarks. You can pick those up and I encourage you to do so and put it in your Bible maybe or put it on a mirror or put it someplace. And also on our bulletin board, you're going to see a big poster there that will be constantly there helping you to remember. And uh, so if you have forgotten... Over the last month or two, don't feel condemned. Don't go around feeling bad. Just pick it back up, and let's continue to press forward with that. All right? Everybody say amen. All right. So this week, you know, Ministry Monday begins 730 on Monday evening. Men's meeting is Friday night. Also this Saturday, we are honored to host the Bible Quiz Finals. So if you'd like to come out for juniors at 930 and for seniors at 1 o'clock, that's Bible Quizzing District Finals. This will determine who gets to go to nationals. And um, that's an exciting time for those that have been involved. And so you want to make yourself available. And finally, you may have seen on the board already, if you haven't, men, take a look at it. There is a men's prayer breakfast, district prayer breakfast, on June 14th. And I need you to begin between now and next Sunday giving me, tell me who is going so that I'm able to give a count. Um, as you know, there is a free will offering there, but there is no charge. But we do need to give them a count so that we're able to, uh, they, they're able to prepare breakfast. This, uh, this particular meeting is in Mantua, uh, New Jersey, which means dad leaving here at what time? ahead of time of uh, as far as leaving here we need to leave what time nine o'clock okay we can make Mantua by then all right he didn't make it crazy I uh, I normally I set the time and he goes we don't have enough time so I thought I'd let him set the time this time all right so if you want to carpool meet here at eight o'clock on June 14th but I need you to let me know uh, that you are um, planning on attending all right and so that's all the uh, announcements that we've got. And uh, I'd like for my ushers, if they would come, and we're going to receive your offering. This is a special day. If you've never been with us for a communion service, you're in for a special treat. This is a time in which we celebrate and uh, give thanks to God for what he did for us at Calvary. To all of our guests and our visitors, if you are willing to acknowledge what Jesus Christ did at Calvary, we invite you to participate in communion. We invite you to participate. If you do not feel comfortable with doing so, you do not need to leave. Stay with us and enjoy the worship, enjoy our time together. But everyone is welcome. Children, you are based upon your parents or the ones that determine the moment where you are able to recognize what you are doing. You are not saved by communion. Nothing in Scripture tells us that we are saved by communion. In fact, there's something in Scripture that says explicitly we are not saved by communion because the Scripture says we are saved by grace and not our works. And so, but even the acts of obedience that are the result of true belief, communion is not listed among them throughout the Scriptures. Instead, it is something that Jesus encouraged us to do as a reminder to ourselves as a reminder. And so I encourage you to prayerfully consider throughout the rest of the service as we come to that point of taking communion, participating with us, and celebrating what Jesus Christ has done for you. Some of you may say, well, I'm not really living the way I should. That's where we all started. Every single person you see sitting here 
that is now serving Jesus, when we grace these doors or other doors like it in other locations, we were not living the way we should. That's the beauty of the gospel because he takes us where we're at and he begins to change us. And if you're willing to give him access to your life, and I promise you he will begin to change it. But if you're willing to give him access, celebrate with us today in this beautiful commemoration and remembrance of what God did for us when he died on Calvary. Can the church say amen? Let's pray together for our offering. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed day. We thank you, Lord, that we can give to you of your blessing to us. God, let it be used for your kingdom. Give this church direction and wisdom as we do it on your behalf. And I pray that blessing in Jesus' name. And the church say amen. If this is your first time with us, follow your neighbor. They'll direct you. We do march to give. If you are unable to march, send it in with your neighbor. All right? Let's give. Jesus, thank you for your blood, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you and we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. You may be seated. This morning I'd like to turn your attention 
in preparation for communion to a passage of Scripture in the Old Testament that has long been recognized to have an uncanny resemblance to what Jesus Christ endured. It is known as one of the most famous prophetic passages that we Christians believe the prophet of old was by the power of the Holy Spirit proclaiming what was going to happen when the Messiah arrived. Isaiah chapter 53, the prophet writes and says, Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly. Yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. Over and over you are struck by the pieces of this prophecy that are fulfilled in the life of Jesus. Jesus hung on a cross between two thieves. And on behalf of the one who asked him, he interceded and said, Today you will be with me in paradise. When he died, he had no place to be buried. And yet we know he was placed in the tomb of a rich man named Joseph of Arimathea. On and on, this passage shows the earmarks of the Spirit of God anointing the human prophet, to speak things which were not yet happened 
with absolute clarity because they were going to happen. I would like to draw your attention specifically for consideration today back to verse 5 of Isaiah chapter 53 and that last phrase, he was beaten so we could be whole. You see, when we talk about the crucifixion, it's been my experience that we spend a lot of time talking about the agony of the cross. And we should, for it was agony. To have yourself hung with nails piercing through your wrist and only your legs to hold you up, hung between heaven and earth, was agony. The Romans had designed it to be agony. It was meant to take days before you died. It was meant to expose you to the weather. It was meant to allow the wild beasts to eat on you even while you still were alive. But we usually spend a lot of time talking about that or, or talking about the scourging. As the Romans would beat a man, and history tells us that in fact, according to Roman law, if you could survive the scourging, you were considered innocent, akin to the American idea and others of if you were a witch and you floated with an axe around your ankles, then you were a witch. And if you drowned, well, you weren't. Problem is, is once you found that out, there wasn't much to do. It was so vicious, the point is, is that you were not expected to survive it, and yet Jesus went through that. And we talk about that. We talk about how it flayed his back, it opened his innards, it all of that, and putting that together with a cross. But in Mark chapter 14 and verse 60, I want to draw your attention to a passage that lines up with this about the beating so that we could be made whole. Verse 60 of Mark chapter 14, then the high priest stood up, before the others and asked Jesus, well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? As the prophet said, but Jesus was silent and made no reply. Then the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah? Are you the son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the son of man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they all cried. He deserves to die. Then some of them began to spit at him. And they blindfolded him. And they beat him with their fists. Prophesy to us, they jeered. And the guards slapped him as they took him away. When I awoke early this morning, and I do not wake early on any morning if I can help it, I heard the voice of the Lord as I hear it, not an audible voice, but I heard the voice of the Lord say, talk to them about my beating. Not my scourging, not my crucifixion, my beating. I don't know if you realize it, but sometimes the wounds that are the worst for us are the wounds that we could make analogy to as beating. They're not lethal. They just wound us. You're not going to die from them, but you're going to bruise from them. And I'm here this morning to tell you that there is a God who took within his body the beating of fists. That by the means of that sacrifice, you can be made whole. The beatings that life have given to you. It may have come at the hands of a parent 
who abused or misused you. It may have come at the hands or the voice of peers who jeered and bullied you simply because you were different. It may have come at the hands of a spouse who for some reason that to this day you cannot fully figure out rejected you. It could have come at the hands of a society that while it proclaims desire for justice, many times falls very short of being just. Each of us have felt within our lives the bruising of a beating. Some of us, this is literal. You felt the hands of abuse upon you. You felt the hands of beating upon you. You literally understand what I do not understand. What it feels like to have a fist plow into your body somewhere, leaving you black and blue, leaving you making up excuses to try to cover the shame. But the others of us have experienced the bruising of a beating that is not necessarily physical, but is still nonetheless very real. The bruising and the beating of those voices that rejected you. The bruising or the beating of those who did not treat you right. I'm not just talking about somebody being insensitive. No, I'm talking about where they made you emotionally and mentally, if not physically, black and blue. I'm here this morning to tell you that you can celebrate what God himself in the flesh did for you because the prophet foretold it, Jesus fulfilled it, and he took beatings every time a fist plowed into his face as they jeered at him. I submit to you that Jesus stood there and held his peace and allowed it to happen because he had told the prophet many thousands of years before, when I do this, I will do it so that they can be made whole. I come to you with a God who, yes, is righteous, a God who, yes, is holy, a God who, yes, demands of you everything, but I also come to you with a God who descended to this earth and he constrained his power, he constrained his authority, he could have called millions of angels at that moment and they would have been disintegrated, they would have been annihilated, but instead he stood there and he took punch after punch to his face and his body he took a beating because he had foretold that by that beating I will make them whole. You see, we have a Savior, we have a high priest that knows what it's like to be us. He did not sin, but he was tempted in all points like we are. He experienced what we have experienced. Now, not everybody here has experienced a crucifixion. Not everybody here has experienced a whipping. Not everybody here has experienced a crown of thorns on your head. But today, God has sent me to tell you that he knows that everybody within the sound of my voice has experienced whether literal, physical, or mental and emotional beating. Insensitivity. Lack of care. A bruising. So that when you move in that particular arena or you operate in that particular way, you wince because it hurts. You're very sensitive. It could be race. Could be gender, could be education, could be in your sexuality, could be in your economic status. All kinds of areas that you have been bruised. Struggles with parents, lack of acceptance by friends. These are real things that make us who we are. And today, 
God has a message for you. I was beaten so you could be made whole. I was beaten so you could be made whole. I took those punches. I purposefully allowed them to beat me so that you could be made whole. You see, I don't understand why it is that God chose to do what he did. We know that from the prophet, and Peter picks this up, by his scourging we have healing. We know by the crucifixion and the shedding of his blood in that death, we have salvation. But somebody here today needs to know, I don't know who it is, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that God has sent me to tell you that the bruising that you have experienced, whether physically, literally, or emotionally and mentally and spiritually, he was beaten for you. He was beaten for you. And he did it with the joy of you set before him. He didn't do it simply to be a martyr. He did it because he loves you. And if you will turn your life to him, if you will give him access to you in your life, he has the ability to make you whole. He didn't just get beaten for no reason. He was beaten to make you whole. You see, every time that I think that we've run out of reasons, run out of places to explore, run out of aspects of what Jesus did when he died on Calvary, every time the Scripture continues to open up and show how much Jesus did at Calvary, how much he did when he suffered for us. How much God put in motion when he would not be deterred from those two days. That night of trial and buffeting. That morning of trial before Pontius Pilate and more buffeting and scourging. And then finally that afternoon when the creator of heaven and earth was hung between his creation of earth and heaven and there died for you and for me. You see, I have been beaten, not physically. I grew up in a home that was secure and loved me. But I have been beaten I've lived in a society that was not always embracing, not always like me, was not always kind to me. But I can be whole. My actions, my attitudes, my spirit does not have to be defined by that because Jesus loves me. Oh, somebody needs to hear me this morning. Some of you just aren't sure whether you can have this kind of hope. You've lived with this pain for so long. You've lived with this for so long that you've made peace with it. I'm here this morning with a message from the Almighty. He loves you. He loves you. And he went to that point in time specifically for you. And he took every one of those punches, every one of those buffets, every one of those beatings. He took it so that you and I could be made whole. You do not have to stay defined by those things. You do not have to stay defined by those actions of others. You do not have to stay defined by what was done to you. No, you can be defined by the love of Almighty God who descended to earth and not only died for your sins, but he was beaten so you in this life can be made whole. Oh, somebody needs to hear me this morning. Somebody in here needs to go ahead and exercise just an ounce of faith and say, yes, Jesus, I want that. 
I need that, Jesus. I need you to make me whole, Jesus. I need release from that stuff that was done to me. The devil spends all of his time and other humans as well under his influence telling us that that's as good as it gets. You are what you are. But God has sent me this morning to tell you, no, that's not true. I was beaten so you can be made whole. I was beaten so you can be made whole. Can he set you free in a moment today? Yes. Will he? I don't know. But whether he takes time or does it in a moment, I'm here this morning with a promise from Almighty God. I was beaten so that you can be made whole. It's why I took the beating. It's why I allowed it to happen. You understand that a little bit later in that morning, he stood before Pontius Pilate, and Pontius Pilate tried to kind of intimidate him. He tried to force him to respond to the way that he wanted to handle things. And he said, don't you know who I am? And don't you know the authority that I have? And don't you know that I have the power to kill you or the power to release you? And Jesus at that moment did not hold his, his tongue. I imagine him speaking very quietly. But with an authority that I am sure took Pontius Pilate's breath away. With the sheer audacity he says, no man can take my life. You're talking about a Roman soldier that had killed. I guarantee you for him to be a governor, he had to be a good soldier. He had killed hundreds and thousands of people. His sword had taken the life from people. He knew the power of the Roman army and the Roman Empire. And here stands this peasant who, according to the prophet Isaiah, was not impressive at all. There was nothing about his looks or his demeanor or his carriage that would arrest your attention. And yet he spoke with a voice that was unlike his physical appearance. No man can take my life. I lay it down and I pick it up again whenever I want to. So you've got to understand that even as Jesus stood in human incarnation, he had all the power in heaven and in earth. There was nothing he could not do. And because he loved you, and because he loved me, he restrained his power. He held his peace. And he allowed his own creation's hands to punch him, to bruise him, beat him. And somehow he took that abuse. Somehow he took that hurt. And he said, now by the means of this, I will make them whole. This is what we celebrate today. Jesus told his disciples, when you take the bread and you drink the cup, you're remembering my broken body and my shed blood. That broken body didn't start with the scourging. It started with the beating. The beating that he took for you. The beating that he took for me. So we could be made whole. Somebody in here, somebody's need to have hope today. As damaged as you feel, as broken as you feel, God is in this place to make you whole. He knew who was going to be here today. And he sent me with the message. I was beaten. So you could be made whole. 
Jesus at this moment Lord in which we feel the quiet and yet very powerful presence of you first I thank you O God I thank you personally for loving me that much that no matter what was done to me no matter what I experienced no matter how, many, how bruised or battered life has done to me you were beaten so I could be made whole I thank you I thank you oh God Thank you. And God, I know that you're not a respecter of persons. And so if you did it for me, then you've done it for others as well. And in this quiet, Lord, in this peaceful presence, I pray, Lord, that by that spirit of yours, you would enter the hearts and the minds of those who are broken and bruised and battered and you would speak hope into them that you would speak into them Lord a hope that you really can set them free that you really can make them whole that you really can make them a new creature in you God I thank you on their behalf and I pray Lord that by your spirit their their faith would be encouraged encouraged enough to reach out to you encouraged enough to just in the smallest of gestures begin to reach for you and say God I believe you whether you do it in this moment and in this service in just a snap of the fingers, or God, whether you spend months and years, either way, I pray, Lord, make us whole. Make us whole. In Jesus' name. Amen. If my ushers would please join me at this moment. If you are unable again to march, just simply either ask your neighbor if you would like to celebrate communion with us to pick up a glass and some bread or if you don't have anyone you're comfortable with that I will ask at the end and ask anyone who has any we will come back to you and bring you uh, the the drink and the bread as before there is both gluten and gluten free the gluten free I believe is the white as far as the bread in each of the of the plates and so you have your choice there. And um, once we have all received and returned to our pews, I will then read from one of the passages of Scripture that tells us of communion, and then we will eat together. And once we've concluded that, this altar will be open, and you will have a chance to not only celebrate and give thanks, but also give God access to continue the work that he's begun by his word. Right, if you would stand and if each section if the center section would come to Sister Thelma 
The left hand section to Brother Wayne, the right hand section come to Brother Owen. Is there anyone that's unable to to uh, walk the distance that would like communion and we can bring it to you? There are several passages that tell us of the Last Supper and of communion. Today I've chosen to read from Luke chapter 22. In the middle of the supper, after having eaten the meal, 
Verse 19 tells us that Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and he gave it to the disciples saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. You may eat the bread. After supper, verse 20 says, he took another cup of wine and said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. You may drink the grape juice. You can simply gather your cups and leave them in a pew or throw them away, have one person throw them away. This altar is now open. Would you give God access to do what he has done? What he's notified you that he wants to do in your life. If you're a guest with us and aren't comfortable with the altar, pray in your pew. Wherever you are comfortable, this is a house of prayer. He was beaten so you could be made whole. Jesus, I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I praise your name. Yes, Jesus, I praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I praise your name, almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. God, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy to us, O oh God. Jesus, I love you, Lord. Jesus, I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God, every broken bone within our body, every broken spirit in this place, every broken heart, oh God, God, every broken mind, work within us now, oh God, and make us whole. Make us whole. Make us whole, God. We give you access, Lord Jesus. God, we turn it over to you. We don't know how to fix it, but you do. You know how to handle this, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we worship you, Lord. Do your work in the hearts and the minds and the emotions, O oh God, of these people. Lord, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. Jesus, you know what I do not know. You can see the hearts, Lord. Lord, you know the needs of this people. I trust you with them, Lord. I love them. I care for them, Lord. But God, I need you to perform the miracle, Lord, in each of their lives. Let them find in this place, Lord, love. The love that you had, so you took that beating for them. God, let them find the mercy, O oh God, for you did not die to condemn us. 
but you died in order to save us. God, we know we've done wrong. We've responded to the bruising. We've responded to the brokenness, oh God. We've acted out of it. It's defined us, oh God, and we are broken. But God, I hear mercy coming through, a mercy seat, a place of redemption and atonement, a place of grace and mercy, oh God. That grace and mercy that will change us, that will make us whole, that will transform us into newness, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Church, be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit, even as you are in the midst of intervening and interacting with Him. Be sensitive to His leading of those around you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're all in the same boat here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We all have various stages and places of brokenness. Yes, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. I worship your name, Jesus. I worship your name, Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Touch us now. Help us, Almighty God. Yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, would you worship him throughout this place? Just give God an atmosphere as he's ministering. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just take your liberty. Whoever you are, wherever you're at, take your liberty because God is focused on you this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I worship you and I praise you. Thank you for this beautiful presence in this place. Thank you, Lord, for your care for us, your gentle spirit, your gentle spirit, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, in your presence. Oh, yes, Jesus. Oh, I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, God Almighty. Yes, Jesus. Only you can make this right. Only you can help us, Almighty God. Only you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, Jesus. On holy ground. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That there are angels all around. So let us praise Jesus now, for we are standing in his presence on holy ground. If you know this song, sing with Regina and I. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. So let us praise Jesus now, for we are standing in his presence on holy ground. Now join us. If you haven't known it before, sing with us. We are standing on holy ground and i know that there are angels all around let us praise Jesus now, for we are standing in his presence on holy ground. All together, sing it out now. We are standing on holy ground and i know that there are angels all around so let us praise jesus now for we are standing in his presence on holy ground. One more time. One more time. Oh, we are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels they're all around so let's praise my jesus now for we are standing in his presence on holy ground. Would you lift your hands and your voices to him in praise right now? Jesus, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful presence here, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the healing virtue of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have in you. 
you can make us whole. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise your name, Almighty God. Yes, we praise your name, Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Once again, it has been an honor and a privilege to celebrate the Lord Jesus in the Eucharist, the communion together. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of it. And may God continue to do the great work in our lives that he's doing. Can the church say amen? God bless you. We do have service tonight at 6, prayer at 5. Be warm and friendly. Greet one another.